I don't know for a fact what happened, but I'm not surprised. Do you think do you, do you believe him? There's not much that happens when the Russian is not behind, but I don't know enough to know the answer. So that is President Biden yesterday weighing in on the plane crash in Russia that purportedly killed mercenary chief Evgeny Prigozhin. We're also getting a look at new images of the crash. It appear to show a part of the wing or the tail of the aircraft. It's a debris field northeast of Moscow. It stretches for more than a mile. And here's what an eyewitness said. I heard an explosion or a bang. Usually if an explosion happens on the ground, then you get an echo. But it was just a bang, and I looked up and saw white smoke. One wing flew off in one direction, and the fuselage went like that, and then it glided down on one wing. It didn't nosedive, it was gliding. I was afraid it would fall into the village. So Russian state media reports 10 people were on that plane. So far, only eight bodies have been found. Also reporting from them that vans carrying the dead are now arriving at a forensic bureau. Our Nick Payton Walsh is live in Zaporizhia, Ukraine, covering all of it. Obviously, Nick, what Prigozhin has said and what he did a few months ago is at the front of people's minds this morning as this happens. Yeah, look, it's important to remind people what a seminal figure Prigozhin was in Putin's Russia. A Putin confidant used to interfere in elections in the U.S., allegedly uh, extending influence in Africa, fighting on the toughest parts of the front lines here in Ukraine with his brutal Wagner force. And this plane crash, extraordinary, the information on open source about what the plane was doing, the catastrophic moment appears that appears to have occurred, causing it to plummet down to the earth. And as you said yourself, the wreckage, so frankly horrifying that two of those bodies have yet even to be found. That is part of the difficulty here of working out what indeed has really happened. Yes, Prigozhin is said by Russian officials to have been on that plane, along with a coterie, frankly, of his inner henchmen in Wagner. Extraordinary that they put themselves all on the same plane. It suggests perhaps they felt that after the failed armed rebellion two months ago that the threat potentially uh, against them from Putin's inner circle may have diminished. But it is remarkable to see these images of the wreckage spread over a mile wide area and mourning already occurring amongst Wagner followers on telegram channels and indeed outside Wagner's headquarters. No final confirmation of his death, but that is something we'll only frankly hear from Russian state officials and Russian media and they are in the service of Vladimir Putin, the man who Prigozhin crossed like no one else has done in the last 23 years in which Putin has been in power. So a stark moment for Vladimir Putin, potentially. Whoever was behind this plane crash, fingers are being pointed at him here in Ukraine and also in Russia too, suggesting this was essentially Putin's revenge. No evidence for that, but it would entirely be in keeping, frankly, with Putin's conduct in the past. He's poisoned, allegedly, critics, taken out critics for much lesser offences than that which Prigozhin was guilty of, and the fact Prigozhin seemed to be at liberty for two months startled many. A key moment, though, because this is clearly Putin, perhaps, thinking that Prigozhin remained a threat and deciding to risk angering all those who followed and believed in Prigozhin by this particular decision. The final fact still unclear, but a remarkable moment again in Putin's Russia. Back to you. It certainly is. Nick Payton Walsh, thank you. Prigozhin's plane crash also came up during last night's GOP presidential debate. Here's former UN Ambassador Nikki Haley. Look at what Putin did today. He killed Prigozhin. When I was at the UN, the Russian ambassador suddenly died. This guy is a murderer. Joining us now are Bloomberg editor and foreign affairs columnist Bobby Ghosh and CNN political and national security analyst David Sanger. Gentlemen, welcome to you. Bobby, I'll start with you. Uh, the president says he doesn't know enough. Um, and we know the investigation will be led by Russia. And Nick pointed out, while that's not going to be conclusive, any question in your mind that this is Putin's doing? The most likely scenario that it's, it's Putin's doing. Uh, the president correctly said very few things happen in Russia without Putin's knowledge or, or something like this wouldn't happen without his authorization. There's a small chance that it was an accident, but that's very, very, very small. The most likely scenario from everything we've seen so far is that this plane was brought down. David, if it is, was Putin, why do you wait so long? It's a great question, uh, Poppy. And one explanation of this is that he needed some time to sort out what he needed Wagner to do or how to go disarm it. He spent the past two months uh, getting Wagner to give up their heavy weapons. 
so that they were no longer a force uh, against him. He gave them some busy work to do in Africa, where they've been active for some time, and uh, a bit in Belarus. But, you know, it's only been two months. It was two months to the day. And I'm reminded of what Bill Burns, the CIA uh, director and former ambassador to uh, to Russia, told us a month ago at the Aspen well, Security Forum. Well, we have it, Forum, David. Which is... Let's play it oh. for people. Here it is. Okay. I think... Putin is someone who generally thinks that revenge is a dish best served cold. So he's going to try to settle the situation to the extent he can. But again, in my experience, Putin is the ultimate apostle of payback. So I would be surprised if Prigozhin escapes further retribution for this. So in that sense, the president's right. If I were Prigozhin, I wouldn't fire my food taster. Prussian, David? It sure sounds that way. I mean, Poppy, this was either a scene from Machiavelli, if it was what we think it was, or it was a scene from The Godfather. But either way, you know, it is a remarkable end for a man who began selling hot dogs and then became sort of the, the moment of, of gangster rule. He rose in that in, uh, in Russia's uh, early 2000s and then uh, begins to interfere in the election, running the uh, Internet Research Agency to come to Putin's aid, and then runs Wagner Group, uh, although denying that he did it until uh, Ukraine came along. So he has really sort of tracked the modern Putin era, and he became a victim, if this is what we think it was, of that same era. And so what does this mean for Putin's power? The ability for Yevgeny Prigozhin to live for two months, to rise up against Putin and live to tell about it, represent a vulnerability. Is all of that erased now? No, it's not completely erased, but this goes some, to some degree to, to protect Put, Putin for the moment. I mean, w what happens in dictatorships like this is when one person raises his head against uh, the ultimate leader, there has to be retribution. Uh, Putin is on record saying that the one thing he cannot forgive is betrayal. And so eventually, uh, if this is what we think it is, then Prigozhin got his punishment for betrayal. And it's a signal to all the other people around Putin that this can happen if you try to betray uh, the man at the top. Uh, as David said, this, this, is a, this is a country that's run essentially as a mafia state. But mafia bosses are always looking over their shoulder. Um, I don't think the fact that, that Prigozhin was allowed to live for, for two months uh, is, is going to change people's calculations. Uh, but if the war in Ukraine continues to go badly or doesn't go well for Russia, then other people in the close circle might begin to get ideas. Of course, at the same time, having experienced the Prigozhin rebellion, Putin will be watching much more closely to see who might be acting against him. Remember, some other generals were, have also been fired. I mean, yeah. uh, uh, Shurovkin, Sergei Shurovkin, the Air Force commander who was supposedly close to Prigozhin was also fired. So this is a purge, not just a one person, but of an That's a good point. And then and his number two also yep. apparently yeah. died on the plane. Yeah. All right. Bobby, David, thank you both.